Hi, good evening. So our question here, um, section one question is, explain why life is like a stage according to dramaturgy. So when researching dramaturgy, it's helpful to understand exactly what it means. Um, it's a sociological perspective um, that focuses on management of everyday life. In fact, Irving Goffman um, is actually credited as being one of the chief proponents where he compares the human world to a theater and actors and fake life, if, if you will. Um, and this, he compares the humans in everyday life to the actors that play the roles on stage in theater, movies, big screen, whatever you'd like to call it. It also understands how, how the order and ordering of the established is by the performance. It questions each performance and the symbols that is used to achieve the desired effect. For the actor and the audience so in a sense us as humans are actors every day and our life is our stage so how is that wrapped into life in a stage um, or life is a stage so the analysis of dramaturgy so um, focuses on social interactions um, as you do a theatrical performance, right? So when you're doing theater, you are acting and you're analyzing your social interactions with the fellow actors and the person you're portraying to be in that series or that show. Um, so in fact, normal life is compared to a play on stage, um, according to Goffman. Um, the goal of this performance is to make the audience, who are the observers of the performance, to believe in what you are enacting. So if you are... So it's, it's more like a sim symbolic interaction. So how we do our hair, makeup, do we wear glasses, do we wear contacts, what outfit are we wearing, what shoes are we doing, um, how we choose to interact with people is inevitably how our, our role in the play plays out. So when you are complimenting someone, are you looking away, are you not giving them eye contact because if you're not giving them eye contact and a compliment then you're not genuine so if you really want to be genuine you have to give eye contact and you have to show that you genuinely feel that way otherwise it's just an act and this is what Goffman's trying to say here um, in fact he also says Individuals are also engaged in impression management by our conscious decision and we present ourselves in certain ways and we continue our performance to ensure that particular image of ourselves is being established amongst others in our play or our life. So he for further goes on to explain that when we're working as a team, we're role playing, right? So when we are have a project going at work and we have teams going and everybody has their job and we all have to, you know, look to that person to do their job correctly or their part correctly, it's important for how we perceive each other or how we're putting off to each other so that's another part of that um, that incorporates the teamwork um, and if you if there's biased opinions then the teamwork may not be as great 
or we won't accomplish as much as we're supposed to. Um, furthermore, our lives and how we perceive and how we put ourselves out there is how we become roles to hold society together as a whole. So our roles in life and how we are and how we play our life out is ultimately what keeps our society together. It also makes a lot of diversity there. So moving on to section two, um, what is social construction of reality? Well, this is a theory um, that the way we present ourselves um, to others is mostly shaped by our interactions with others um, as well as our life experiences, meaning the people we hang out with, the way we, our life experiences and where they've been and where they've, they're taking us. It kind of is all held in our own hands how um, this theory wraps around itself. The book, um, The Social Construction of Reality by Peter L. Berger and Thomas Luckman actually point out that there's three There is um, three steps involved in reality construction. Um, one is externalization, um, which is the human product, objectivation, which is objective reality, and internaliza internalization, which is man is a social product. So we won't go too much into this book, but... Um, some of these chapters in here are very were well worth the read. Um, but I do want to go on in this book. They really define it as a quality appertaining to a phenomena um, that we recognize as having independent of our own violation. While knowledge is defined as a certainty that phenomena are real and they possess specific characteristics. So how does that pertain into my life? Um, socially, I am very well trained business person. Um, I have a lot of training behind me, a lot of years of experience in business, um, medical to be exact. Um, so I run about Four pra medical practices with about 100 employees um, currently right now. And my social construction and my career has made me, I guess, a lot of who I am today. Um, the people that I interact with um, in my career, professionally, my colleagues, my co-workers, my employees and um, upper leadership um, they have constructed and shaped who I am and how I interact with people on the other hand life ex other life experiences um, for example I guess when you hang out with people all the time you have a certain group of people that you hang out with those people you when you hang out with that many people you tend to mimic those people right um you kind of start molding to each other you have the same interests you like the same things um you you just really connect and i think that's what social construction is about um on the other hand so who i am at home is a lot different than who i am at work I'm more open at home. I feel more comfortable with my my friends and my family um, to be able to come to be out of my shell more. I'm not that different at, in my career or my job. I'm very transparent. 
I say what I think, but I do it professionally. When I'm at home, I say what I think and I'm very transparent on my terms. Um, and whereas I at work, it's on their terms, right? So I think that has a lot to do with it. Plus, I, I was one that did not grow up with a lot. Um, I grew up with a single mom. Um, and I saw how hard it was for her working two to three jobs. Um, my grandparents had me a lot. I was at my grandparents a lot. Um, and although my mom, I didn't want for anything, it still was a struggle. And one thing I always promised myself with my life experiences is that I wouldn't struggle. My kids wouldn't struggle and I would be successful and I would get the things that I want out of this life. And I think I've stayed pretty true to myself and my values. I don't really play a role or become somebody that I'm not, <clears throat> that I'm not, excuse me. I just adjust between my professional and my personal life, if that makes sense. So this brings me to section three for me to personally explain what I felt the meaning of holding society together, what holds society together. And I'm sorry, I don't do videos. This is not my forte. Um, really, I think what holds society together is the normalcy, the beliefs, the values, the cultures, the freedoms that a lot of people have, um, their collectiveness with their, with all of that combined, I think is what for me really holds society together. Um, and maybe I, I lean more towards Durkham on that because it's a collective consciousness of how people relate to each other and what they agree or disagree to. Um, and I'm going to go back to if everybody was the same, life would be boring, world would be boring. So having society... that produces those atmospheres or those different perceptions is my idea of what holds society together. Now we could go on and we could also talk about, um, Marx, Marx. Um, he was another so sociologist like Durkheim that, um, Durkheim believes that the collective consciousness is what binds society together. Um, however, Marx, I'm just going to pull it up here. I apologize. Um, Marx, Karl Marx, um, asserted that all the elements of society structures depended on economic structure and Um, the modern society. He also believes that there's only two classes of that modern society. Burgess, which don't quote me if I'm mispronouncing that, and proletariat, <laughs> um, which means that the burgesses um, are the factories, the businesses, the owners of the companies, the equipment. All of that those are the ones that produce the money and the wealth and the <clears throat> plurarians are the workers I disagree with that because I believe that the only way that you can produce wealth from your equipment your business and your factories is because you have the workers if it isn't for your workers then you wouldn't be producing anything so I don't think that is necessarily what holds society together it and maybe in a way it does it takes workers to make a business successful therefore those two together bring society together so in a way it's kind of right I just disagree that 
how Karl Marx states it. Thank you for joining to me and listening to me talk about society and sociology um, from an aspect of theatrical. Um, life is like a stage. Again, social construction and how, what holds society together as a whole. So I apologize that it's been a little hit and miss, but videos are not something I do. Um, I'm not comfortable with them unless I'm on a Teams meeting with my colleagues. So thank you for joining and have a good night.